Well guys, look it. We finally have sunshine and we are back at the berries. I know I promised we were gonna do jelly in the last video with that Pomona Spectin, but the rain was absolutely ridiculous. So here we are now, three buckets. Everybody hold up your buckets and two children. So this should go pretty quick with all these helpers, right? Yep. Famous last words. <laughs> Anyways, let's go check and see how many berries we managed to miss because it's been days with the horrible weather. Oh, and James is trying the first apple. I don't think they're going to be ready yet. What do you think, James? I mean, it's all right. It's all right. Not quite ready yet, though. Yeah, a bit better. Yeah. Well, it doesn't look like we missed them all. There's quite a few still left, quite a few still to come. I know some of them are definitely overripe, but we're going to pick what we can. We don't want for the freezer. We just want for jelly. Oh, this one here is a beauty. Lots of wonderful fruit still. And see, this is why I just can't seem to stop picking. The other thing I have to say is even though it is quite warm today, the breeze back here is beautiful. It's also keeping the mosquitoes at bay with all the moisture we've had. The mosquitoes are crazy. Well, I did a pit stop at one of the apple trees and gave it a taste test. Little tiny apples, but man, they've got an interesting flavor. They almost taste like pears. It's weird, but they're definitely ripe, so I filled my pockets. Well, not only did we pick our full three tubs, but we got some apple treats for ourselves and for the ponies. So this is Miss Mandy. She enjoys her apple treats. Doesn't she? She's a good pony. She's a very good pony. And in the dark building here, we have Miss Peppy. There, it's focused. Getting her treats. She's hiding away from the bugs. Now that there looks like some good apple. Well, here is our haul from about an hour and maybe 15 minutes of work. We got our three tubs of berries, a whole bunch of those pear tasting apples. And now James is in the process of making us a yummy smoothie, which is part of the reason why we grow and harvest all this fruit. So you just watched us picking all those berries. And I know I said I wasn't going to do much more with berries, but after so many viewers comments on this particular item, I decided I had to get one to try it out. So we're going to have some fun in this video playing with, wait for it. I'm super excited. A steam juicer. I went and did it. I did. So we're going to try steaming those berries and I'm going to steam some apples and I'm going to make jelly and I don't know what else I'm going to do, but apparently this is going to change my world. I will admit this is a nice piece of equipment. Haven't tried it out yet, but I've washed it all up. That's one of the things it does say to make sure you do. And I will admit the trickiest part, and maybe I was having a moment, was figuring out the clip for the hose. That was, there was nothing in the book. I have the book out and nothing says how to clip it onto the thing. But trial and error and I did get there. I should have videoed it because it was actually quite comical. But anyways, so it is now clipped on. We're good to go. I have water in the bottom. I filled it a little bit more than three quarters. I think with the berries that should be plenty because they don't take as long as some other fruit. And I've got it all ready to go and I brought up the berry. As you remember, we have three containers of berries. I do want to know how much berries I put in to what juice came out. I would love to hear from people that have one of these steam juicers. Many of you did recommend that I get one. Uh, what are some of your recipes? What are things like your ratios, I guess, is what I'm after. Because I need to kind of know how much fruit I should put in this. I don't want it to obviously overflow into the pan at the bottom. So many things that I haven't figured out yet. I love trying out new stuff. So I got my one liter out. I am betting that I have probably five liters of berries. So I'm thinking it's probably gonna make about eight cups, maybe a little bit more, but we'll see. I'm gonna measure it over the pot just in case I lose some, which I bet is gonna happen. Oh, actually it went quite well. Oh, even just sitting in the fridge, some of these got pretty right. So that's four. So there's eight cups, 12. Do I go more? Maybe I should stop at 12 and just freeze the rest because I have no idea what this is going to make. I made the executive decision to go for it. So, there's berries going everywhere. So that is 
16, basically 18 cups in there. Okay, guys, it's steaming. Look at it, it's steaming. And I've already done this once, but it's still super exciting. There is, you guys can't see it, but I can. There's juice in there. This is pretty good. I'm excited to see. I think it will simplify things a lot, especially for these kind of fruits where I don't really want the uh, seeds and stuff in it. So I'm very curious to see how this works out. I'm also very curious to see how much juice we get out of uh, 18 cups of fruit. All right, so I wasn't following instructions super well and I put a little bit of juice just to see what would happen, put the hose down and I poured it back in. I only did a little bit in the jar just to try it. Going back and reading the instructions in the book, it says to take a whole liter of the juice out and pour it back in the top of the steamer over everything and then put your clip back up and let it steam a little longer. So that's what I'm going to do now. Let's hope I don't make a mess. It really came out of it last time and I think there's a lot more juice in there now. So I'm gonna give this a try. And I'm even gonna document it for you guys just in case it goes really wrong. Take my little cap off. Wearing my uh, oven mitt this time because I did notice it was very hot last time. <gasps> Woo! See, I told you it was going to go really wrong. This is going to be interesting. It's really coming out. Oh, there we are. It's slowing down. But it's still coming out, so I suppose that's good because I do not have a leader yet. This is quite hot. Even with my oven mitt on, I am going to have to put it down but it's almost a liter this time. So we're gonna go with it. Woo, that is hot. Put my lid back on just for safety purposes. And clip. Oh, you should just take a look. The fruit has lost a lot of color. I do hope though that we end up with more than a uh, liter of juice. Well, as you can see, it's getting dark in the room. It is night. We're getting late at night. This took a little bit longer than I anticipated it was going to take. So we're just going to drain the juice for now into my big canning pot. And then we're going to come back to this tomorrow and sort out how much we got and separate it for making jelly and so on. So hopefully this won't all end up on the floor because I've got a much bigger <laughs> opening to get the hose into. Here we go. I'm curious. I hope it doesn't just kind of spew. It might do. I don't know what to expect. Woo! Well, it is slowing down already. Well, it is pretty much at the bottom of the thing. So I don't know if you're supposed to tip that and get all that juice or whether it's going to have a whole bunch of sediment in it. I really don't know what to expect from this. Okay, so I have no idea what I am doing here. This is definitely not tutorial information, but there is still a lot left in the juicer and it's not coming out anymore. So I'm concluding as long as there's no sediment in this water, I'm just going to tip it. Maybe if anybody has any advice on whether I should or shouldn't do that, you can tell me so I know for the next time. I probably should have watched a few YouTube videos ahead of time because I will admit the instructions that came with the book really don't tell me anything. So let's look and see if there is any sediment. Now I'm not sure if Chris can capture it there. When I tip it, there is a few bits of, it's like hairs or seeds off of things, but it's not like a nasty sediment. So, I'm thinking I can roll the dice and just go with it. There, see, can you see it? It doesn't show up? Mm -hmm. Little bits in there? So we've got it drained. I think it's probably at least two liters, maybe not quite, but definitely enough that we'll be able to do a batch of jelly, maybe two, we'll just see how it goes. I'm gonna get the lid on, I'm gonna get it in the fridge, and we're gonna come back to this tomorrow in the daytime and get going on some jelly. All right, so, I knew there was no way I could go to bed and not know how much juice my juicer had made. So I bottled it anyways. And as you can see, we've got one full quart 
and almost a second full quart, so not too bad. I probably could dilute this a little tiny bit and be able to make two batches of jelly, or we could just go pick more berries if we really like it. So next, I'm going to actually try. This is unsweetened, just pure juice berries. So I'm gonna give it a try. I don't think it's going to be my thing, but I'm gonna try it. Oh gosh, it tastes like wine, but not good wine. <laughs> I would definitely be one that would need sugar, but it certainly does taste like blackberries. So it's gonna make some really good jelly tomorrow. All right guys, so you saw us last night getting our juicer going and making some juice, which is fantastic. So today we are finally gonna try and make a round of Pomona's Pectin Blackberry Jelly. I'm excited for this. Again, we're gonna go with the sugar version because we did enjoy that one over the honey or the no sugar with our raspberry jam. If you haven't seen that video, I can try and link it. I don't remember what video it was. I think it was a just can it. Uh, so I will see what I can find and I'll link it above. But definitely go back and just check out all the videos. You, you won't miss it if you check them all out. We're going to be making Pomona's Pectin uh, blackberry jam today and we're going to use sugar. Now my plan is to try and make this jelly with one and a half cups of sugar. The Pomona's Pectin recipe says between three quarters of a cup and two cups. Now if I go to a regular pectin jelly recipe it says seven and a half cups. Now the one clause I would say with that is if I put in seven and a half cups I get like seven or eight one cup jars of jelly. With this Pomona's pectin, I'm probably only going to get four. So I suppose it's more concentrated, more sugar per jar, right? But not really, I guess. We're going to go with that anyways. My math skills are not with me today, so I don't know how that works, but I'm going less than half on the sugar for sure. So it is definitely less sugar than what would be in regular jelly. So anyways, I'm rambling on and it's not really important. We're just going to make it and see how it turns out. And hopefully we'll have enough left over to maybe try and make some syrup. We're experimenting here. We're probably going to be experimenting all year as we try different ways to reduce that sugar in our diet. So let's get going. All right. First step for us is we've got to get our jars sterilized and our lids in some water to heat. Our oven is almost up to 225. Once it's at 225, I'll put these jars in. I usually give them 11 minutes. Just to be on the safe side, 10 minutes is what's required, but I put 11 minutes on the timer and that should give us enough time, hopefully, to get things going on the uh, jelly here. What we need to do is get our four cups of juice into our pot, then we need a quarter cup of lemon juice added to that and our calcium water. Now, basically, it's calcium chloride. Now, I gotta check my recipe because I can't remember how much calcium chloride you need to add. Get out my little cheat sheets. I'm only learning with this low sugar stuff. Yes, so it's four teaspoons. Oh, it's ready. So we can put our jars in and then we're gonna get our fruit mixed up. So we'll go. <laughs> It'll finish shortly here. So now that we can get our jars in there, we're going to get everything into our pot. We need our four cups of juice, a quarter cup of lemon juice, four teaspoons of calcium water, and then we're going to get that stirred up and boiling. And meanwhile, off to the side, we're going to take our cup and a half of sugar, and we're going to add four teaspoons of our pectin powder and get that mixed together nice and thoroughly so that once we've got our fruit juice ready, we can add that pectin to it and jar it up. So I'm thinking this is probably gonna be a pretty quick process so I'm gonna get my jars in first and then we'll get going. So as we're in the process of adding the pectin to our sugar, one thing I want to note, now for us in Canada, I don't know how many places have this available, but I found it at Home Hardware and it was about $10 for the one box of the Pomona's pectin. But the one thing I will say, especially when you're doing jams or syrups, is that pectin goes a long ways. There's a lot in each container. But one thing I am noticing is with the jelly using four teaspoons, I wouldn't get four batches out of one of these packs. So uh, I don't know on that, but I still would really like to try it and see how it tastes because we love using jelly and jams in our homemade yogurt. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it above. Hopefully I remember to come back and do all these links. <laughs> but uh, anyways, it was just a quick little note. It's a little bit more pricey, but definitely when you're doing jams and things, 
it goes a long ways, but I'm not sure with the jellies that it will. But if I balance it out by doing some jelly and some syrup, because the syrup uses very little pectin. So that's my plan. We're going to see, uh, unfortunately I'm finish, finishing an old pack. Um, so I can't even go into detail as to how much I get, but I will try and make note of it and then mention it in a future video as to how much I really got out of one of these little packs of pectin. But I just wanted to say that as we're about to mix up our um, sugar here, that uh, definitely value for money. I think it goes the distance, but if you were just doing jellies, it might not go as far. All right, guys, so made an executive decision. My jelly juice here is just starting to boil. We need to get that to a real vigorous boil before we add our sugar pectin mixture. I decided I'm gonna plunge ahead. I did a bit of Google research and the syrup recipe is exactly the same, but with a quarter the amount of pectin. So instead of doing the four teaspoons, I'm going to do one teaspoon mixed in with my um, sugar. So I figure, you know what? I have a big water bath canner. Putting four jars in there is silly, so we're gonna do both recipes at the same time. So I'm going to do it exactly the same as I did the jelly, except for we're only going to put in the quarter of the amount of pectin. So one teaspoon pectin, and then we'll see what the results are at the end. I'm trying to pay attention to both things at once here. Uh, the one thing I really noticed, better turn this down before it boils over. The one thing I really noticed about the uh, jelly compared to the syrup is when I was stirring the jelly after I'd added the sugar and pectin, it was already jellifying along the outer edge of the uh, pot. And it's definitely not doing that with the syrup, which is good because I want the syrup to still be runny. I don't want it to be a solid chunk that I pour onto my ice cream, right? Um, so I think it's going to work. I'm going to make sure I save a little bit so that we can let it cool and see the consistency compared to the jelly because I think that's something that would be an interesting little tidbit to know. All right, there we have both of them in there. We got four jars of our syrup, which I've labeled with gold lids or rings. And then we had four jars plus a little 125 mil of our jelly. So all in all, not bad. I kept a little bit of the jelly one out. I could have done 125 mil of that as well, but I wanted to have some out to sample because we can kind of scrape the inside of the pot to sample the jelly, but I can't really do that with the syrup. So we've got the syrup here, we've got some jelly, and we're gonna taste test once everything's cooled off and see what we think of this less sugar. I already know what I'm going to think because it's going to be so flavorful with the fruit taste. I think this is one of those things where once you change, it's gonna be hard to eat the other stuff because it just won't taste as rich. That's what I'm gonna go with. So we're gonna get this into the, well, it is in the water bath canner already. It needs to get to a boil and boil for 10 minutes and then let it sit for five minutes with the lid off after you've turned it off. And then we'll take them out and see if they all pop down and seal, number one, because that was a problem with my raspberry jam, and if that jelly all sets. All right, guys, look at the set on that jelly. I have one of my little corn cakes here. I just kind of scraped it out of the pan, but you can see it's set very, very well. I am excited to see how these turn out once they're out of the canner. Of course, they're still in the canner right now but I can't resist the urge. Plus it's lunchtime and we're gonna have this as snack. So I'm gonna try it first and be the guinea pig, of course. Wow. It's exactly as I said, so full of blackberry flavor, not too sweet, but yet I probably could have gone less sugar. I'll be honest, it's still very sweet tasting. Hmm. Super pleased and set beautifully. So as long as those jars seal and it stays good, which I am going to do the same thing I did with the raspberries, kind of let it sit for a month and see how it goes. Although this is so tasty, I'm not so sure it's gonna last a month. <laughs> but anyways, I'll bring you back once the syrup has had time to set and we'll give that a test as well. Well, we are the 24th of August. That's 24 days already of the Every Bit Counts. And we're back to picking fruit. You saw me using that juicer, super excited about the juicer, but we still got a few things that we need to get out of the garden. Elderberries, this is something, we've talked about this in another video already, very, very important for us on the homestead. And we use this kind of for medicinal purposes and we dehydrate it. And we've got some more ready to go, gradual kind of process. We're gonna be harvesting probably still for another week here and there, 
but we're gonna get what we can off this beautiful one. They are so dark and gorgeous and get them into the dehydrator, but that's not all we're gonna harvest, hang on. So another decent elderberry harvest. It's probably about two cups worth. So it'll look good in the dehydrator for sure. And I'll show you at the end of the Every Bit Counts Challenge just how much we've got. But I think this might bring us up to, I'm gonna say 750 milliliters maybe. We'll see when we get it all dehydrated and into that container for our final episode. So guys, I'm standing out in my San Marzano's and guess what? Guess what I just discovered? I'm excited. Look, look, finally they're starting to ripen and this isn't the only one. So that heat today really seems to have brought them out. So hopefully by the end of this challenge, we'll have done something with tomatoes. So last thing for today that we're gonna harvest out of the garden is our peppers. I'm backing up and standing here in our bigger patch, which you kind of gotten a glimpse of before, but we've not actually harvested from yet. So you can see here, I almost missed some because I have gotten complacent and I hadn't come out and looked. And there is a couple ready on just about every plant in here. So it looks like we're gonna be freezing some more peppers tonight. Well, this is what we got from this garden. We're gonna go over to the raised beds next because I know there's a whole bunch more there to pick, but we did a bonus harvest. Look, three tomatoes, they'd fallen on the ground. So I guess in the rains or the wind, and so I'm gonna take them in, they'll finish ripening off and look at the broccoli still going or broccolini or whatever, it's not real broccoli, but I'll be honest with you, loving the fact that our friend Miles sent us these seeds because I had wrote broccoli off completely. We had decided we weren't gonna grow broccoli because we weren't good at it. And this year, this broccolini is amazing. So I'll write down what kind it is because I can't remember right now off the top of my head, but it'll come across the bottom of the screen in case any of you wanna try it. Look all these wonderful noodle beans coming. I love how noodle beans look. Totally irrelevant to what we're doing with harvesting today. That's gonna to come tomorrow. But one thing that I noticed when I came over here, come with me. Look, cherry tomatoes. Super exciting. So tomato season's just about upon us. Look, so many peppers. And this is just one plant. This is so incredible. We are gonna be swimming in peppers. Okay, so I will admit, I had the best of intentions of harvesting a whole bunch of herbs to put in my drying rack, because it's completely empty right now, and the mosquitoes got the best of me. Honestly, picking the rest of those peppers was horrible. I don't know if anybody else is noticing it this year, but the mosquitoes are just, they're vicious. Vicious, that's all that I can say. But let's take a look at how many peppers we got. Ready? I could. I wish I could do a drum roll. Dun, da, 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 or something like that, right? Look, oh my goodness, and they're beautiful. So looks like we will be cutting up some peppers after dinner to get into the freezer. I also picked some kale because we are going to be having, I'm just regaling you guys with my life story because why not, taco salad. So remember that taco meat we made a couple videos ago? Well, some of it I froze because I didn't have enough room in my canner to do a ninth jar. So we're gonna have taco salad tonight with that taco meat. I'm super excited. And we will make sure we get these elderberries into the dehydrator so that they are useful for us over the winter for making tea. Uh, I'm gonna make up a little mixture of tea with all the things that we like to have in one bucket. So all I have to do is scoop out of that one. I'm super excited about it. I'll be sure to document it when we get to it. Uh, we still have a few things that we're still harvesting to make sure we have everything we need. But I'm going to make dinner and get busy on chopping and dehydrating and hopefully achieve greatness. And I will do a recap once we're done. Two more bags of peppers for the freezer. We're now up to 22 pounds of chopped up peppers frozen, which I'm super, super pleased with because as you know, I don't wanna be buying peppers over the winter months, right? So we have one left out here that is for cutting up for our taco dinner. And I still have a bunch that were kind of green and whatnot, so we didn't cut them up yet. And they probably would equal almost another bag so we're gonna leave these, we're gonna come back to it, and we'll probably be picking more in the next video. So they'll just be another couple bags to go in the freezer. All right, so we're on to the next three days of 
every bit counts challenge, but I am revisiting that syrup because we never did our taste test. And this morning I made Dutch baby pancakes. Yes, they are a favorite around here. I do them with the almond flour. It works perfect. I haven't opened this jar yet, but you can see what's happened here. It is pretty solid in my opinion. It is kind of more like a jelly. So we're going to be visiting this again but not maybe with blackberries. I'm gonna try and make my raspberry syrup with minimum sugar. And uh, I'm hoping to get a little bit runnier product. Now, I wonder, I guess I could have heated it, you know, like as if, cause I'm pouring it on pancakes, but then like on ice cream or something, I wouldn't want it heated, right? So not 100% sure that it's really syrup. Um, definitely that Pomona's pectin is working awesome, but we're gonna get it onto our pancakes Oh God, it's sealed even with that little amount in there. So we're gonna get it onto our pancakes and uh, give it a try and see. So you can see what I mean here. It is quite thick. It's more like a runny jelly, I guess. Now with the heat of the uh, Dutch baby here, I'm curious as to how it will be, but I'm excited to taste it. Oh, it looks so good. Uh, so I'm very curious as if anybody has actually made syrup with the Pomona's pectin and kind of adjusted the recipe, let me know because I really would like to master this because it is something that we do use here on the homestead and I'd love for them to be lower sugar than anything I've ever made before. This is definitely lower sugar because my recipe usually calls for six cups of sugar when I do my raspberry syrup, or I think it's five or six cups. Um, and this was only a cup and a half, so. is very good perfect sweetness level much similar to or very similar to the jelly it has the perfect amount of sweetness but still has the blackberry flavor um so i'd like to just get it runnier <laughs> so maybe i should just do no pectin at all um but uh anyways we will visit that because i would like to master it and i have a feeling we're going to be going back and picking some more blackberries in the upcoming days mm. anyways I'm gonna go enjoy breakfast with some coffee. Well guys, that's another video come and gone. Holy cow, time is flying and I will admit, not as productive as I could have been these three days, but super, super excited and impressed with my juicer. Love that you guys all suggested I should get one and love that I bought one. <laughs> and I do have to say, I bought one thanks to you guys and all the viewing that you have been doing. Uh, I took my funding from YouTube for uh, the month and I decided to put it into a juicer. So I exceptionally appreciate all that you guys are doing for our channel and for uh, keeping us going here on the homestead. But we're going to do a quick recap because it's already into the 25th and we need to get going on the next video and hopefully being a little bit more productive. But I'm gonna revisit the syrup. So in an upcoming video, we're going to try and tweak this recipe a little bit in order to get that to more of a syrup consistency. Now, I guess I could have probably heated it up, but in some applications, like when we mix it into a soda stream or something like that to make a flavored drink, I don't really want to heat it first, but I don't want it chunky. So anyways, we've got some tweaking and learning to do on that. Super impressed to have four jars of the syrup and four and then one little half jar of the uh, jelly. That definitely is going to, oh, I just see here, I labeled my jelly as syrup as well. <laughs> That's the kind of morning I was having. <laughs> Good thing I still have my Sharpie here. We'll make some adjustments on this. The other thing I should say though, is we still did well on a few other things. Those peppers are really piling up in the freezer, which I am super, super pleased with. And the plants are still pumping it out as you saw here. And did you see those couple tomatoes? So I think hopefully by the end of the month, we should be able to do something with tomatoes. But if not, we're going to creep into September. That's the way it always goes here because really the beginning of August is not our peak harvest time. It's not until we get to the end of the month and into September, we really start to see those bigger harvests. So stay with us. We're going to keep going with this every bit counts. I am super, super pleased with how much is sitting over here on the floor. And at the end, I will definitely go through everything that we have canned during the Every Bit Counts Challenge.